This video is brought to you by Verb Energy. Follow the link in the description to save 60%. Yeah, 60% on a Verb Bar starter kit, including their new cinnamon roll flavor. Let's cut right to the chase. Cyberpunk 2077 was perhaps the most anticipated game of all time. Advertised as one of the most ambitious open world, role-playing, story-driven, first-person games ever created. Cyberpunk had Keanu and boobs, a classic combination for success. There's a saying that goes jump twice as high, fall twice as hard. And Cyberpunk definitely hit the ground pretty freaking hard. As unfortunate as it is, many modern games release as a $60 beta test. And Cyberpunk just might be the king of fully released beta tests. But now an entire year has passed and yes, I'm actually getting this video out on a year to the day. I'm just as surprised as you are, people. And so begs the question, what changes have been made to Cyberpunk over the last year? And more importantly, is it worth buying, returning to? Is it worth playing in general? Those are the questions we're gonna answer today in this video. So let's waste no more time and hop back into the breathtaking world of Cyberpunk 2077. Saying Cyberpunk released buggy would be an understatement. Prior to its launch in 2020, the game was delayed three times. Reviews of the game could only show pre-recorded footage approved and provided by CD Projekt Red, which might I add is incredibly shady. Cyberpunk managed to sell a staggering 13 million copies in its first 10 days across all the usual platforms. But as all of you know by now, things went south right after that. Shortly after its release, CD Projekt Red was hit with major backlash from angry fans and even angry developers within their own company. The game was removed from the PlayStation Store and wouldn't return until June of the following year. Many players demanded refunds, CD Projekt Red faced multiple lawsuits, and all these things combined to send a once beloved development studio's reputation right down the pooper. CD Projekt Red responded by apologizing and promising fixes, but for many people, especially those on last-gen consoles, the damage had already been done. The incredible work many developers put into the game for years was squandered, ruined, and worse, maimed. Because executives within the company wanted to get the game out within the holiday window. Not only did the game release in a broken and unplayable state, but the situation was made worse by many false promises making players feel manipulated and cheated. Since then, the game has been updated with some major patches. I'm talking about 32 gig patches here with over 500 supposed fixes. This year has been almost entirely dedicated to fixing the base game that was released last year. I could go over them, but they're basically just bug fixes and basic quality of life improvements, nothing too noteworthy or exciting. Apparently fewer people call you asking if you wanna buy a car. So hallelujah for that. There's another big update supposed to come in the first three months of 2022. This update will launch alongside the next gen upgrade for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X owners, all seven of them. The next gen update was supposed to come out this year, but was delayed to 2022. Kind of pathetic, people who bought the game on PS5 a year ago still have to play the PS4 version, just saying. Cyberpunk is supposed to have a free DLC expansion coming next year, but as of right now, there's no confirmed release window. CD Projekt Red also hinted that the Cyberpunk multiplayer mode might never see the light of day as the company is focusing on other, probably more important stuff. There's also gonna be a next-gen version of The Witcher 3 coming next year, which I found kinda surprising, not gonna lie. It was hinted that the Witcher upgrade and the Cyberpunk DLC would release around the same time, but I would take all this information with a grain of salt considering all the other times that CD Projekt Red has delayed things. As of today, Cyberpunk's recent Steam reviews are very positive and the game is 50% off through December 13th. Cyberpunk has apparently been selling pretty well recently, or so my professional research has reported. Now I reinstalled Cyberpunk to see how the game is in December of 2021, which hey, that's right now. Before we get into my thoughts, I think it's important you know what my opinion 
on Cyberpunk was at launch, so you can better grasp where I stand going into this. People's opinion on Cyberpunk is going to vary drastically depending on how many and what kinds of bugs you experienced while playing it. I played the game on PC, so I didn't run into some of the atrocious and downright terrifying bugs plaguing many people on PlayStation and Xbox. In my playthrough, I didn't run into any issues that prevented me from progressing through missions. The game rarely, if ever, crashed while I was playing. I would say I had a very good experience compared to most people, and so I feel like I'm probably less critical of the game because of that. I am, however, very much aware of what other players went through. I think a game should be reviewed at release. We shouldn't give studios a pass just because they fixed the game down the road. It's not okay when Battlefield did it this year, and it wasn't okay when Cyberpunk did it last year. No other product gets away with this kind of stuff in the same way that video games consistently do. And that's no bueno. You only get one first impression, and I wouldn't blame you if you played Cyberpunk, returned it, and never want to pick it up again. With that being said, I thought Cyberpunk was quite enjoyable. Aside from V, the characters were super interesting. Many of the missions, not all of them, but many of them are pretty enjoyable. The world building was absolutely incredible. I was going to say breathtaking again, but decided against it. Many other aspects of the game were just okay. I love The Witcher 3, but you can definitely tell this was made by the same people who made The Witcher, if you know what I mean. I would put the bugs I encountered into two categories, immersion breaking and downright hilarious. Most of the time, something off would just happen. A sound effect wouldn't play, objects would clip through one another, the AI would react in super uniform and awkward ways, things would blow up or eject into the air for no reason, that was fun. Textures would take forever to pop in, things like that happened all the time. This might not seem too bad, but as I said, the best thing Cyberpunk has is its world. And for every piece of Night City that pulls you in, there's another piece sucking you right out of it. You either encounter bugs that prevent you from progressing through the game, or you progress through the game encountering bugs that prevent you from immersing yourself in the game. Even today, there are surely still technical issues with Cyberpunk, especially depending on who you ask. My playtime was a relatively small sample size, but at least for me, the game was much more stable now. Which is cool, but isn't really all that exciting or surprising. The game didn't crash, certain visual bugs I remember from the first time through weren't there anymore. The game kept a stable frame rate on my PC. On a technical level, everything worked how I hoped and assumed it would. Does that mean you should buy Cyberpunk? If you bought it last year, does this mean you should get back into it? I honestly don't know. Cyberpunk wasn't just a buggy game, it was an unfinished game and there's a difference between the two. Today, Cyberpunk is not nearly as buggy as it used to be, but it's still not a finished product. Aside from the bugs, numerous advertised features were either missing from the game or not fully implemented to their potential. The Night City Police Department and how they function in the world was and still isn't what it's supposed to be. The three story pathways we heard so much about have little to no effect on the greater narrative outside of their first brief introductory mission, there really isn't any way for you to change your appearance in a cool way with the Ripper Dock after you initially create yourself to, you know, role play in this role playing game. I could go on an extensive list, I'm sure there are many out there, but you get the point. If you're someone who's been waiting for the game to be fixed strictly on a technical level, then I would say now is a much better time to hop in or buy it for the first time. You will have a much more stable experience and potentially an even better one once the next update comes out with the next gen upgrade. But if you wanted more from Cyberpunk, if you want to play the game that was initially promised to us, then you have two options. You can hold on to hope and wait for CD Projekt Red to implement some of those missing features, which probably means waiting another year or more. Or you can accept the game for what it is, know those features are probably canned or saved for a sequel and decide if you still want to play the game we were actually given. As for me, I'll return when the free DLC comes out to see what it's all about. But besides that, there's nothing else really compelling me to return to this world. I will say even without those features, Cyberpunk is still a very good game. Some people think Cyberpunk without the bugs would be game of the year material. 
I am not one of those people. Maybe one day we'll be able to see what the original vision for what this game was supposed to be fully realized. But if that day is coming, it's still not gonna be here anytime soon. Those are my thoughts on Cyberpunk one year later. In the comments, let me know what your thoughts are on the game. Have you played it recently? If so, do you think it's worth playing now or has the damage forever been done? If you enjoyed this video, let me know by dropping me a like. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.